It's currently winter here, and I'm spending more time looking out the window at the ponds from the warmth of the house than playing in them. But I got curious and wondered what is the water temperature out there? So I grabbed one of those cooking thermometers and decided to go check. And then I thought, well since I'm out here, I should do a video on the role that temperature plays on the pond ecosystem and the pond's inhabitants. So let's get into it. G'day, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. Water temperature can have a significant influence on the pond ecosystem. We have things like the fish slowing down in winter, and certain fish will stop eating completely. They might start to breed as the temperatures increase. Bacteria is more active in higher water temperatures. We might get different types of algae at different times of year. Water holds different amounts of oxygen depending on the water temperature. So in this video, I'm just gonna ramble on about these different aspects of temperature inside the pond. And if you're interested, stick around. And if you're not, I completely understand. So first let's talk fish. Now I personally hardly ever feed my fish. In the warmer months, when they tend to be more active, there's plenty going on inside and outside the pond. The biological processes are in full swing, organic materials are being broken down quickly, nutrients are being released and the plants are growing. So there's plenty of vegetative material, but there's also lots of tiny organisms embedded in the ecosystem and they're also enjoying the warmer water. If the pond isn't overstocked, that should mean that there is an abundance of food available for the fish. People often ask how many fish should I have in a pond? And the real answer is buggered if I know. What I say is if they're breeding and the fry are surviving, there's plenty of food. If the fry aren't, there probably isn't enough. Now most people are going to actively feed their fish and that's fine. It really is very enjoyable. But with certain fish, you need to be aware of how they feed and metabolize food at different times of the year, depending on the water temperature. For me personally, this isn't something I think about often as I like to stock native fish and I tend to not overstock my ponds. I let the fish graze and hunt whatever is available depending on the seasons. I also tend to keep more fish that are native to my climate, so I know they can take care of themselves. It's well documented that fish like koi and goldfish cannot metabolize animal proteins very efficiently at water temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit. Once water temperatures are this low, you should stop feeding. Don't worry, because as the temperature drops, the biological processes also slow down and algae starts to appear. Algae is more plant-like than animal-like and contains more plant-type proteins and carbohydrates, which koi and goldfish can more easily metabolize at these lower temperatures. So there's no need to worry about them starving. Now let's talk about bacteria. We all know how important bacteria is to the health of the pond ecosystem. And if we don't, we bloody well should because I drone on about it constantly. In winter, or whenever temperatures in the water dip below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit, the bacteria really starts to slow down. This means that all that organic material, like leaf litter that's fallen into the pond, isn't getting processed anywhere near as quickly as it was in the summertime. And this is why you'll often experience more algae during winter or early spring. The algae takes advantage of the nutrients that the bacteria would otherwise be processing. And it's not just winter that you might experience more algae. You could experience more algae in the height of summer. This can be due to a few factors, and here's my hypothesis. During the summer, the bacteria are very quickly processing waste and different forms of nitrogen. The nitrate that's produced as a byproduct could be helping to fuel the algae growth. But also in higher water temps, the oxygen content of the water decreases. 
This could be robbing the bacteria of the oxygen they need to process waste and can lead to them stealing oxygen from the nitrate, which effectively reverses the nitrogen cycle. Algae then wants to grow by feeding on the ammonia. Algae is also beneficial as it adds oxygen to the water. So this is just the ecosystem balancing itself out. Now that's just my theory and for the moment I'm sticking with it. Because I do find that my Goldilocks zone occurs in spring and autumn. In my ponds, that seems to be the perfect water temperature where the bacteria and the algae are in perfect balance and the ponds are just stunning. I usually notice more algae in the middle of winter and the middle of summer, so both temperature extremes. The last thing I want to talk about is the oxygen inside the water. I already sort of touched on this in regards to the bacteria, but it's also important for the health of the fish. Just like us, fish need oxygen, but most species need to get it directly from the water. And of course we know that water is H2O. But what isn't as commonly known is that at higher water temperatures, water cannot hold as much dissolved oxygen. Therefore, during heat waves, you really want to ensure that there's plenty of water movement or agitation. This helps keep the water well oxygenated. This can be especially important overnight in the summer. During the night, plants inside the pond also consume oxygen. So say if you are running a pond on solar energy without a battery system to keep it running at night, it's important that the pond is stocked with hardy fish that can potentially tolerate lower oxygen levels. The same can be said for smaller bodies of water in above ground ponds. During my little walk around with the thermometer, the smaller above ground ponds were slightly colder than the larger in ground ponds. In summer though, this is even more pronounced with the smaller ponds heating up to higher temps than the larger in ground ponds. The smaller ponds will also fluctuate much more throughout the day. So again, making the right fish choice is important. I personally like hardy rice fish in these smaller ponds as they can deal with both extremes. And one more thing, with deeper ponds, it's a good idea to thoroughly mix the water. If you don't, stratification can occur. This is where during summer, the warm water remains on the top and the cold water on the bottom, and in winter, it's reversed. So during summer, it's preferable to have the cold bottom layer of the pond mixing with the warm top layer to keep the biological processes at the bottom of the pond ticking away. This should help reduce the buildup of sludge. The most common way to mix the layers is with the use of an aerator. Then in winter, in areas where the pond freezes, some people like to use the aerator to keep a hole in the ice. Keeping a hole in the ice is a good idea as it allows gases that build up inside the pond to be released. Now, if this is something that you do or would need to do, it's a good idea to keep the aerator a few feet off the bottom of the pond. During winter, the warmer water is down in the bottom of the pond the colder water is the water at the surface that is in contact with the cold air. This is why in winter the fish will tend to congregate at the bottom of the pond where it's a few degrees warmer. If you have the aerator on the bottom of the pond, this warmer bottom layer will mix with the cooler top layer. It's usually not the end of the world if you keep it on the bottom. It's just more of a comfort thing. The fish will thank you. Maybe. Anyway, that's about it for me rambling on about pond temperatures. Uh, I'm sure this was incredibly boring, but if you found it helpful, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.